uh, really excited uh, about this recruiting class. I think uh, we all know that uh, recruiting is about filling needs, and I felt like we uh, were able to address a lot of those needs, 11 mid-year enrollees that will be able to be here for uh, spring practice. Uh, we're able to address needs at every position. I thought we did a really good job of getting some junior college players in here, uh, two in the secondary that will be here for spring practice. Uh, first round, um, uh, first team All-American defensive end that can be here for spring practice. Two quarterbacks that will be able to be here for spring practice. Huge needs in the O-line and a wide receiver, able to address those. I thought uh, Coach McNeil did an unbelievable job with the offensive line. And then uh, I was signing a uh, junior college wide receiver that could come in and give us some immediate help there with, with some guys leaving. But, uh, but overall, being able to sign 25 guys, 16 of which are from the state of the Mississippi, we all knew the 19 class was really, really good. But to sign 16 guys from Mississippi, really, really proud of that. And, uh, you know, in, again, a lot of really, really quality young men in this class and excited about it. I think it's a huge step toward uh, rebuilding this program and having the opportunity for the first time to get back to uh, 85 scholarships. So looking forward to it. All right, we'll take questions. We'll start with Nathan front. You talk about getting back to 85. Was depth the main thing you were looking for in this class, just being able to get as many bodies that fit what you need at the program? Sure. I think the typical signing class is, is 25, um, but uh, we're able to have you know 30 to 32 in that range, depending upon what you do with some guys on your team currently. But uh, that, it's, it's a big class, and it does give you the opportunity to build that depth that you need. And that, that, that's the thing, as you look at the, um, the quality of, of this, of this uh, signing class, you see every position get hit and hitting needs at every single position. And that's a huge thing. And a lot of these guys have been committed for a long time. That's what you don't want to forget. You don't want to forget about the big battles that you won in the summer. You know, all those things, these guys have been committed and stuck with us throughout the whole time and a lot of really, really quality depth in this class. Questions? Matt, you know, there's been a lot of focus on linebackers for you guys for a couple of years. Do you feel like you sign people there who can compete and get on the field early? Well, you know what, I think um, we have some young linebackers with Momo and Jacquez. I think that's a good building block. But I think um, as we move forward into this February signing class, you can probably look for us to go find a junior college linebacker or another linebacker that can step in there and compete with those guys. Because you got Jacquez, you got Momo, and you got Willie, but you want to get some more guys that could come in there and compete. Matt, what are you looking for for February? I mean, you just kind of addressed that, but uh, defensive players, well, I would think more maybe than offensive players. Yeah, I think uh, I think probably two spots in the D line, one spot at linebacker. I think I think that'll be that'll be important. You probably want to look at one more receiver, maybe one more running back. Uh, but but I do think that two spots in the D line and a spot at linebacker will be critical. But the, and that, that's the that's the good thing about this early signing period is. You have now. You can focus in, and you can you can lock in, and you can go get those guys. And I think I think uh, we, we'll have a couple of guys that are committed that will sign in February. But you also can narrow your focus and go after your needs, which which is good. Questions? You have two signees, Matt, from Tupelo High School. Can you comment specifically on what you expect from Jordan Jernigan and Tay Standifer? Yeah, I'm uh, really, really, I mean, first of all, great, great young men, great families. Uh, really enjoyed uh, getting to know those guys as people, but they're also really, really good players with a bright future. You know, Tay had an unfortunate injury with his Achilles, so he'll, ha he'll have to get healthy, but he's an early enrollee. We'll be able to come in early and start rehabbing early. But, but Jordan, is a, he's a dynamic playmaker, and, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll fit right into our wideout room. So really excited about those guys. I do. When he, when he came to camp and we offered him out of camp, he was uh, 195 pounds. When, when he came here the last time, he was 223 pounds already. So you're, you're looking at a long athletic linebacker that, that's going to have a bright future. Going back to looking ahead to February, do you plan on being involved in the graduate transfer market at all and looking into that sort of thing, or are you mostly involved no, I, in I think I think you're always in that market. You know, you're, you're kind of the best available to fill needs. And so I think, uh, I think you'll always be in that market at, at certain positions. 
and, uh, and, and we will be as well. Matt, it just it seemed like you were able to make up some ground late there with some Horn Lake guys. Can you tell us when you got? I know a lot of times you don't like to talk about guys you didn't get. Right. But uh, when were you informed on the decisions from uh, those two? Uh, today, and, and, and like and like you said, you don't want to focus on you know, the guys you don't get. You want to focus on the ones you do get, because because really one player or two players don't define your class. And again, this is another top 20 recruiting class, and there's a lot of great young men here, but. Uh, and obviously those guys are good players and, and they'll have great futures. But uh, for us, you want to focus on the guys you did get because those are the guys that are going to come in. That's what we're going to build this program with. I know it's early, but does anyone stick out immediately to help you all on the defensive side immediately next year? Yeah, you I mean, you say the junior college guys for sure because that's why you sign them. You sign them to come in and, and help immediately. So Jamar and Jonathan, uh, you know, from Jones, I think they can come in and make an immediate impact. Obviously, Sam uh, being a, a really, really good pass rusher, uh, you know, I think those guys can come in and help us immediately. You know, you take Drummond, who is another first-team All-American junior college receiver, that can come in and help immediately. So when you say immediate needs, you look at the junior college guys because that's why you're taking them. Well, I was going to ask you, even though today is a signing day, it kind of ties in. Do you want to comment on your offensive coordinator search? Yeah, you know, it, it's been uh, obviously these last three weeks you're going in and you're, you're, you know, you're recruiting. And my focus was on the D.C. and recruiting. And now my, my focus can kind of shift to that uh, offensive coordinator and getting the right fit for the program. And it's a, it's a great opportunity for me because you, you saw the, um, I think, the improvement you see that you're going to have with, with Mike McIntyre. And you're going to see a very similar improvement on the offensive side of the ball. So it's an opportunity for me to get back. We're getting back to 85 scholarships so I can put my stamp on this program. And I'm really, really excited about the opportunity to do that, to have coordinators in here that I'm picking, that I'm hiring, and, and, and create that culture that we're looking for. Do you expect Dennis Jackson to be somebody who could come in and make an impact early, or do you see him – as probably going to be somebody who may end up redshirting. I think uh, I think Dennis is a very dynamic player, so I think he will have a role early, just because of his speed and his explosion. I think uh, as far as punt returning, kick returning, speed sweeps, receiver, he can do a lot of different things, and he's very very dynamic, and, and definitely one of the top you know two or three wide receivers in, in the state for this class and, and and in the country. So I'm really really excited about Dennis. Jaden, same thing. Jaden is a very, very fast 10, 600 meter guy, very, very long, uh, very good receiver. So very, very explosive. And, and again, I thought we, again, did a very, very good job at you know, signing wide receivers to come in and replace um, the guys that left. You ended up signing two players instead of Arkansas, two of the top ten. Um, you know, we haven't seen Arkansas be much of a priority over the last couple of years. What kind of went into their recruitment? You know what, I think, um, I just think the, uh, the interest early, we're able to get them on campus and, and very, very excited. I mean, when, when, when Darius walks in here, uh, Thomas and then Jaden Jackson, those two players he's referring to, they are uh, very, very talented guys. Darius, I mean, he looks like you're supposed to look and he's got a bright, bright future. And I think he's going to be a big, big time offensive tackle. So very excited about it. I think he's kind of, for whatever reason, flown under the radar, but uh, he is a really, really good-looking young man from a great family, and I'm excited about him. Going back to Mike for a second, can you kind of talk us through what the search process was like when you landed on Mike McIntyre and how you kind of courted him to come back to Oxford? You know, obviously um, it was a, you know, a tough situation for him, but it ended up working out for us. I mean, it's a guy that I've worked with before. Um, Unbelievable experience. Uh, you know, we worked with him here. You immediately knew he was a great recruiter, a great person. Uh, if somebody that you'd want your son to play for, and then he leaves and he's got seven years' experience in the NFL under Bill Parcells with the Cowboys and the Jets. And then we, we go to Duke and he's able to rebuild that Duke defense uh, basically from scratch. And then he goes to a San Jose State program that that wasn't very good and he wins there. Then he goes to Colorado and they haven't been very good and he wins there. So he shows that, uh, that knack and that ability to turn things around very, very quickly. And uh, part of his knowledge, part of it's his, uh, his passion and part of him just being a really, really good coach and a good person. And so I think uh, it, was, it was a no brainer for me to be able to have a guy like that. I mean, he's the 2016 coach, national coach of the year. 
So to have a guy like that come in and run your defense uh, and, and for, have a sounding board for me. Uh, so I think, I think those are huge. But I think that was a huge hire for this program, and I think he's going to do a phenomenal job. Do you have a timetable for your offensive coordinator hire? Uh, I, I don't. Um, I want to get the right fit because uh, you know, I, didn't, I didn't really feel like the, uh, the offensive coordinator was going to affect the signing class. And, and, and for the most part, it didn't. So I think just taking our time now and shifting our focus to that and, and getting the right fit. Because I think there's going to be plenty of great candidates with all the success we've had on offense. For me, it's finding the right fit uh, for my personality and the blueprint of the program. At least in the, the January capacity, it, uh, it appears you may have striked out in Memphis again. Have you got any plans to try to address that between now and February? Yeah, we'll try to address it in February with, uh, with the remaining players that are still there. But uh, obviously, we have a year-round recruiting plan that's based on relationships and getting those guys here and continuing to, to battle and to, to compete, and we'll, we'll continue to do that. When you talk about fit with the offensive coordinator, is it fit with the program, or do when you bring a guy in, will he meet with Matt and some of the other offensive players, or is it just fit with you and the program? I think it's fit with us and the program, because I think you know part of coaching is using the people that you have to, you know, I think that's offense. Is you take you, you take the best pieces that you have and you use those guys. And I think I think that's offense, but it's overall fit uh, with with the staff and the program for sure.